Here it is right here, Gen Expand. Now I've been using this for over a week, but what is it? It's designed to expand the size of your photos using AI. And why would you want to use that? Well, it can actually be very useful. If you've captured a photo and you don't have the correct ratio, you can correct it using this tool, or you have cut off a part of the scene, hey, you can add it back in. Now let's dive right in and show you how it works and let's see if it's actually any good. First off, who can get it though? If you're a pro subscription or a Creative Journey Pass holder, all you gotta do is update to the latest version and voila, you can have access to this and the other two generative AI tools. If you're a lifetime subscription holder or you don't yet have Luminar Neo, you'll need to get Luminar Neo Pro subscription. The good news is there is a huge saving on right now. You can find that in the link, the description of the video. So let's get started. My name's Ben from Ben's Guide. Welcome to the video, guys. And let's jump into Gen Expand. It can be found here under the Generative Tools section. You've got all three of them here, and this is found in the catalog. You've got your bounding box on the outside of the image, which you can use to expand the area. Now, when you grab the bounding box, you can just drag it either side. And when you've dragged it, you'll see the expand becomes visible. You also have a box here and it says, what do you envision here? This helps you type something in and this tells the AI software exactly what you want it to try and fill the area with. So I've been told the right way to use this software and there is definitely a wrong way as well. The right way to use the software is to make small incremental changes. So you can see I'm just dragging the edge of the box here and then I'm gonna go down to my prompt type in what I want it to show. So I'm going to say zebra crossing and then press expand. You can see the tips pop up here and this is Skylum showing you exactly the right way to use the tool. So this is really beneficial to you to avoid you making mistakes. As you can see, it's provided us with a very good result. We've got the pattern which has gone further into the area that we've expanded to, and it's actually done it very well. Are there a few things we could change? Potentially, I don't think we had this here to start with, and I'm not sure what that is. And if you do want to change it, all you've got to do is press expand again, or maybe you change the prompt to give it something else to work with. You can see that I only made a very small change to the edge, and you can see that I did one side at a time. These two things, super important. You only want to actually drag each side individually, as you can see here, left and right. You don't want to try and make a change to both sides. And this is because the software behind the tool struggles to really understand what you want when you do it with both sides. When you save the image that you're happy with, you can then go along and find it in the generative creations area under the catalog. That's where it will be saved to by default. I want you to see a case quickly of how you should not use this tool so you can avoid this. We've got this image here. It's got lots of information in the edge of the image, as you can see. If I go back into the Gen Expand tool and then I choose to expand on the left hand side, I'm actually going to expand the box by quite a lot. And now I'm going to type in foliage because this is what I want it to actually add and press expand. So if we zoom in here, now it's made the expansion and take a look at actually the result we've got. You can see that there's this strange line here which doesn't make sense because you've got blue and then you've gone into this strange line. You've also got the foliage which goes from one kind of foliage here to another and it's really not great. Actually a little bit better than I was expecting, but still not right. So how would we avoid this? Well, you make small changes one after another. So if we go back and take a step back, you can click on this here to do that undo. Now, if we are to make small incremental changes a bit at a time, type in the same prompt here and then press expand. If you're wondering how long it takes, it's about 20 to 30 seconds something like that for it to actually spit out the results. Now it's made the changes that we wanted. So let's have a look at the results. 
This is using a small incremental change. So zooming in, you can see that the foliage itself here is actually a lot more natural and this is zoomed right in. So the results are quite impressive, but we do still have this strange line. And this brings something to our attention, which is actually very useful to know. If we zoom out now, what you can do with this image now is you can actually press save and then you can use the other two tools in the Generative AI Trilogy to actually get this image to where you want it if it doesn't give you the results that you want on its own. Looking at this image, we want to get rid of this line. So I'm going to try and swap this line out now using Gen Swap and then try and remove it and replace it with some sky. Port the Gen Swap tool here to about this size with the brush and paint over it. And now what I'm going to say is I'm going to say sky. If I press swap now, I'm hoping that this will take care of the line using this gen swap tool. And there you go. It's removed that weird area. So we've used two tools together in combination to get the results that we want. So this is the thing with gen expand and the generative AI tools. There's three of them and it's best to use them in conjunction with each other to get the results that you want. Now I'm actually going to make a future video coming in the next week or two all about how to use these three tools together. If you'd like to watch that, hit subscribe to make sure you're notified when it comes out. But let's move along to another example so you can see different examples of how this tool can be used, the pros and the cons. You might be wondering how it would perform for things like portraits with hands and feet that have been cut off in the images and you're going to see how it performs right now. So going into Gen Expand, let's see if we can take care of this area a little bit here. Let's say we just need the kind of ratio or the bounding box of this image to be a little bit higher. So let's just drag this down a little bit and try and see how it takes care of that. I'm just going to type in legs here. I'm not really sure what the appropriate term would be, but let's see what it spits out. Okay, let's zoom in and see what we're working with right now. So as you can see, this sock has continued quite well. But we've got a bit of a blurry area here. The same is going on. I'm not sure if this is a pattern that it's changed. And then you can see it doesn't really know what to do with these areas here. Now this is very tricky actually because it's almost starting to go into a trainer or a foot and I'm not really surprised it's finding it difficult. So it can come up against some things which it doesn't really know what to do. And I find this is where you have to really play around with the tool quite a bit to get the result that you want. Now I will say that Darlene has released a video going into more detail than I have in this video about portraits, things like hands, and how you can actually get the best out of the tool um, when using it for portraits. So if you want to check that video out, I'll actually put a link in the description. You can check that out. It's a great video. It goes into a lot of depth and detail about it, and that will help the portrait photographers out there to get the most out of it. Now, if I was actually going to try and fix this and find a solution to it, I would take a step back. And if I needed the extra ratio or the extra size, what I would do is I choose to actually increase the selection, the bounding box here, and just do it in an area which is a little bit more simple for the software to understand. So if I increase it this side and then now put in grass, I'm hoping that this is going to be able to pick out the information, even though it's a little bit blurred, it might find it difficult, but let's see how it performs. Now, very interestingly, it's ignored my prompt of grass and replaced it with a wall. And actually, it probably works better than it would have done with some blurry grass. You've actually got this nice straight line here, and it's done a pretty good job overall. Could we change it a few times and make it better? Probably. I hope you've been able to get a real overview of Gen Expand and generative AI in general. It's very much, like I said, in its infancy. So it's starting out. It's going to get a lot better with time. I suppose the real question is, do you want to invest in it now or invest in it later? Because there is no doubt that this will be part of everyone's workflow when it comes to photography, editing, and even video in time, because it's going to speed up the process. 
We're just not quite there at the moment when it comes to the quality of it. And that's something, like I said, that will come in time. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you are interested in getting hold of this software, remember that big saving you can get hold of in the description. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.